Hi, on this video we will discuss how to delete a comment, edit it, or even like or dislike it. We will also see how to set a limit for the number of comments displayed on the page. So if the user wants to see all the comments, he should only click on this button here. At the beginning, let's start by typing the web methods responsible for handling the edit and the delete events. I will go here to Notepad and copy these two methods and let's paste them here. The delete comment is very simple. It will accept an argument called comment ID and it will execute this SQL command. The save comment on the other hand is accepting the comment ID and the new title and the new comment. Then update the current comment then save the changes back. Now let's go to the design.js to write the counterpart functions that should communicate with those two methods. I will go here and let's type the following function under the on DOM ready function. So let's go here and go to notepad and copy the control delete first. Control V. So I referred here the, to the parent element of all the comments and add the function on then the click event and the context of control delete as you know this anchor has a class of control delete and it has a parent which is a dev element that has a class of comment control panel and this dev element has an attribute called data id which holds the comment id and as you might remember, on the file design.aspx, there is a confirmation dialog here at the end, which has the ID of dialog confirm, and inside it, it has a span which has the ID of confirm message and has the following text. For sure, I want the confirmation text here to be changed. This is why I have typed this line here. Then var ID equals this dot closest comment control panel and get the data ID. Then the dev element itself, the grand dev element by itself, the clicked anchor dot closest, which will search among the ancestor of that element until it finds a dev which has a class of dev comment. Now this is a jQuery UI dialog applied to the dev which has a ID of dialog confirm, and there is two buttons here: the delete button and the cancel button. When the cancel button got clicked, the dialog will close. Whereas when the delete button got clicked, it will run the post function, which in return communicate with the delete comment method. Then the dialog will close at the end. And if we refresh here the page, now if you click here, for example, it will display a message box. And if you click on delete, it will be deleted. Now let's go to Notepad again and copy the code snippet responsible for the edit. Control C, Control V. Okay. Dev comments dot on click the context control edit and the function. Let's save all and test this out before discussing it. So if you refresh the page here and click the icon here, you can notice here that the profile picture has become hidden. Also the username the label which has a comment title written inside the comment itself all of those elements got hidden and also the element which has a, and also this element which has a class of user rate has become hidden as well since you are on the editing mode also notice that both the edit and the delete anchors became hidden whereas the ok and the cancel anchors became visible Notice also that all the four mentioned icons are originally belongs to the same parent dev element which has a class of dev control panel. So let's see how the cancel control works. Control C, Control V. The control cancel is very straightforward as all the code written here is about returning back each element state to where it was before clicking the edit comment anchor. So if you save all now and refresh now if you click here and click the cancel everything will return back to where it was now what about the ok button so let's copy it 
and paste it here. Once this anchor got clicked, the post function will communicate with the save comment method inside the web service file by passing the following arguments comment ID, the modified title, and the modified comment. Now by saving all and refresh here, let's type test3 for example, press the OK button. OK. Now if you refresh the page, OK, everything has saved back successfully. Now let's discuss the comment like and dislike. Let's start by the web method first. And the web method will handle both cases, the like and dislike. So if you go here and paste, this method accepts two arguments, the comment ID and the is like. The is like here is a boolean which has either true or false values. So if the user clicks the like, the value will be true, whereas if he click on the dislike, the value will be false. Okay. So at the beginning, there is something called here number of records and the number of records aims at investigating whether the current user has already liked or disliked this comment before or not. In case he didn't like or dislike this comment before, the variable's value will be equal to zero and the following code will run as a new record will be created and added to the comment like and dislike table. Whereas if he has already liked or disliked this comment before, the following code will run and the following code will first investigate whether he has already given a like or dislike before. If he has already given a like before and this time he tries to give a like as well, the method will return something called rejected. As it has been taken for granted in any social media website that any user is not allowed to either like or dislike anything twice. However, in case the user decided to change his opinion about a comment from like to dislike or vice versa, that thing is acceptable. As the record on that case will switch its status from true to false or vice versa. Now let's go to Notepad and start by copying the code that will fire after clicking the like button, then paste it here. This code first tests whether there is an authenticated user or not. If there is a one, the following code will run. Whereas, if there is not, the user will be redirected to the login page. Now, in case the user is authenticated, the image weight will be shown and the post function will run in order to communicate with the message that we have just written here. And in case the result of this communication is accepted, the anchor will replace the like class with the like fired class. The class like fired is nothing but the same icon with a green color. So if you switch this like class to like fired, this icon will switch to green. Var likes will test how many likes this comment so far has got and those number of likes will be increased by one and typed beside the like icon. However, if the result is rejected, the attribute title will be replaced to you have already voted here before. So for example, let's rebuild our project and refresh our page. Since this particular user has already liked this comment, if he clicks here once again, look at the tooltip here, you have already voted here before. This is the title attribute. Whereas if he clicks here, the icon will change its color to green and the number of votes will be increased to one. I will do pretty much the same with the dislike, so let's copy the dislike and paste it here. It's exactly the same code with subtle differences like removing the class dislike and add the class dislike fired which has a red indication. So if you inspect any dislike and replace this with the dislike fired, this is what you will get, a red icon and the number of dislikes will be increased by one as well. If the current user has disliked twice on this comment, the same tooltip will be displayed on the anchor and so on. After this process success, in either cases the like or dislike, the image weight comment will become hidden once again. So let's save all now and let's test the dislike. So if I dislike this one, Okay, this one, remember I have liked it before, 
If you click on the dislike now, the dislike will success and if you refresh the page, the number of likes will be decreased by one and the number of dislikes will be increased by one. And I think this makes sense. At the end, we still have one more issue to take care about. As when the design get a lot of comments, the page will become too long which may reflect a bad design. So as a workaround, many websites put a limit for the number of records displayed inside the page. And in case the user insists to view all the records, he should click a button located at the end of the records list. To do that, I have already prepared the following code. So let's copy the code here and paste it here. So we have already a button here, has the ID of load more. If you go to design.spx and search it, this is our button here and this is the classes that it has. So in case the number of comments, number of comments by the way is the number of elements that carry the class dev comment. And if the number of comments exceeds five, let me say four. So if you save all, and refresh the page now okay here is our button here if this button got clicked this what will happen all the dev elements which has a class of dev comment will show so let's test this out not here what will happen okay after clicked logically this button should hide okay if you click here this button will hide and the comments will be displayed that's all for now and as a homework try to use the bootstrap popover plugin to show a list of the names for people who have already liked or disliked a comment then check the answer inside the final project that you can download through this video's description thanks for watching if you like the video please press like